Yeah. Dad, what are you doing here? This is my baby, and I don't give a stuff who the father is. Is that what you wanted? A baby? No. My son wasn't good enough for you, so you turned your attentions to his father. You don't have to listen to this. If you go ahead, then Oi. this one is going to tear my family apart. Jude! <gasps> Yes? I think the eggs are ready now. Let it boil. Why don't you turn the ring off? Don't you dare. Please, Barry. Don't listen to her. You don't want to spoil our breakfast, do you? You know what to do. This morning, and on the M42 Southland. That's it, love. That's it, moron. Put the saucepan down. Do it. Do it now. No, come on, put it down. Do it. It's dangerous. Do it, you miserable son. Larry! Every 30 minutes during the day and every 15 minutes at peak times. I think these eggs are ready now. Hey, you. Where are you? Riverside. You're supposed to be taking things easy. Yeah, I know, but I just wanted to say hi to everyone and let them know that I'm back. Are we still on for lunch? You bet. I've got a lot of catching up to do and I want to hear absolutely everything. You better make it a long one, then. Can make two o'clock? Yeah, I should be able to. Usual place. Yeah, OK, then. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Twist and pull. It's supposed to be idiot proof. Maybe if the foreman would lend us a hand instead of issuing instructions. No, you don't really want me to come round there and show you how it's done, do you? You twist and I'll pull. I'm still not sure this is right. I mean, it's not even twelfth night. But it is a new year, so it's time to get back to normal. Well, I for one can't wait to get back to work. Well, didn't you have a good Christmas? Can we please change the subject? I don't want to mention the C word until at least November. Hi, Jed. Hey. Hey, what a surprise. How was Scotland? Oh, you know, quiet Christmas, hectic Hogmanay. And how are you? We're both very well, thank you. Didn't expect to see you in today. No, you know me. Can't keep away. And you're not on call? Well, the boys in blue don't seem to need me at the moment, so... Well, I, I thought I've got plenty of things to sort out here. So, if you'll excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Doors open in 20 minutes, and I don't want to see one single tiny bit of tinsel around by then. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Yes! Thank you. You don't have to eat it if you don't want to. I do want to. Is he back again? He never went away. He just went quiet. I know. What about that model you got for Christmas? <laughs> You haven't even opened it. I want to, but... I'll help you. You won't let me. It's the last one you need for your collection. Please, Barry, for me. No. No! Let me. The glue's in the sideboard. The usual place. Yes. An old army mate who stayed in Germany mm. invited some of the old regiment over. It's good to see them, actually. What about you? Oh, a nice quiet one, just me and the kids. Uh, you certainly look refreshed. Mm. Well, I wanted to make this Christmas really special. The previous one, it was just too close to Phil's death, but we were really able to get into the spirit of things this year. Good. What about you, Kate? Oh, I, I went home to Ireland. Couldn't stay in the house. It was too full of memories. Anyway, Mum's always complaining she doesn't see enough of Kieran. 
Trouble was, she told the whole family, traipsing round the whole shop showing them off. Ran into a couple of aunts and uncles I've never even heard of. Mind you, I don't think we've had as good a time as George and Ronnie have. Where did they end up? Costa Rica. Oh, it's all right for some. <laughs> Dear all, 55 in the shade, golden sands, hot nights, Leatherbridge, eat your heart out, love George and Ronnie. Suddenly Dusseldorf doesn't sound quite as exciting. <laughs> when should you back? Thursday. Well, for those of us who have to work for a living, all the best for best in 2004. <laughs> Thank you. Right, can't wait any longer. Better open up, see who's overdone it with the turkey or pulled a Christmas cracker too hard. Have a seat. I haven't seen you for a while. How have you been? Tired. Are you not sleeping again? It's not just that, Doctor. I'm not here about myself. Barry. If Jack was still here to help, it might be different. And Barry, well, he's got much worse in these last few years. Since his father died. It's like living with a volcano. Sometimes I can tell he's going to blow. I just never know how big the eruption is going to be. And you think he's building up to a big one? Mr. Red is back. Since when? A few months. I have to be so careful with everything I say. I never know if it's Barry or Mr. Red who's in charge. And what's Mr. Red saying now? Mostly criticizing, telling Barry he's rubbish, uh, making him say and do things. Sometimes we can shut him away. But these last few days, it's as if Barry doesn't hear me anymore. Has he still not had his psychiatric assessment? No. But I referred him to the mental health team months ago. I keep phoning. But each time it's a different nurse. And they've never even met Barry. I'll chase them up, see what the delay is. We'll get this sorted out. Dr. Thompson, no disrespect. If you know how many times I've heard that, I can't do this anymore. I, I, I'm too tired. I came here because... because... I didn't have anywhere else to turn. Maggie, I promise you, I'm not going to let this drag on any longer. I'll get on to the mental health team today, OK? Uh-huh. Judith, have you got five minutes? Shouldn't you be working? I want... I need to say what Mum did, pushing you down the stairs. It was awful. Well, that's one thing we agree on. I don't know how worried I've been. For you, the baby. Well, as you know now, we're both fit and healthy. Now, if you don't mind, Debbie, I've got quite a lot to sort out here. And is one of those things the baby? That's none of your business. Of course it's my business. The baby's going to be related to me, isn't it? Whoever the father is. I thought so. You're not interested in my welfare. It's the precious little McQueen I'm carrying that you're worried about. Well, of course I'm worried about my family. Have you any idea what you've put us through? What a horrible Christmas we've had. Well, mine wasn't exactly merry. Mum left home. Two days before Christmas. I don't want to know, Debbie. And that's it. You tear my family apart and just turn your back like it's nothing to do with you. How dare you? Debbie, there are patients waiting. 